and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, welcome to my channel, and don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and give a like on this video. So in today's video, we are going to be making my favorite pad of shoe. I love pad of shoe so much because you can use it to make cream puffs or eclairs, and cream puffs can either be filled with pastry cream or they can be savory. Here's the recipe. The first thing that I'm going to do is preheat my oven to 375. Next, we are going to turn on our stove onto medium to high heat and pour in one cup of water and we're going to put one stick of butter in. So here I have one stick of butter and I recommend cutting the butter up into pieces so that way it melts a little faster. So to our mixture, I'm also going to add some salt and sugar. Now when making pâté chaud, I prefer to use a wooden spoon, but you can also use a rubber spatula as well. And with our water and butter mixture, we're gonna have the two combined, and we're gonna bring this up to a boil. On high heat, our butter is all melted and our mixture is to a boil. We are going to lower the heat to medium and take one cup of flour and add it to our mixture. Mixing. So even though our mixture is all combined together, we're going to want to make sure to cook our mixture a little bit longer for an extra two to three minutes to cook out that flour taste. And it should be a nice dough texture. So once those two to three minutes are up, we are going to take our mixture and add it into a bowl. Now that our mixture is into our new bowl, what I like to do is I like to take this the back of my spoon and kind of press it against the bowl. This is going to have our mixture cool down a little bit because we don't want to scramble our eggs once again. And we're going to let this mixture cool for three minutes. Now with our cooled down mixture, what we are going to do is take four eggs and add it one at a time to our dough. So that's one egg and we're going to mix the dough and the egg all together. So it may look something like this. It's gonna be very hard to mix together, but what you have to use, just use some elbow grease and eventually the mixture will incorporate. We are now adding our second egg Really gotta use the elbow grease. Adding our third egg. I promise when it seems like it's not gonna mix together, it eventually will. And we're adding our fourth and final egg to the batter. The last egg is the hardest egg to mix in. So our dough is finally completed. And one way to tell if you have the right consistency is if you take your wooden spoon, you dip it into the dough and you pick it up, it should hold a nice peak right here just like that. And your batter should be somewhat sticky, I would say. Um, and now it is time to pipe our profiteroles onto the baking tray. So how I like to do this is if you take a piping bag, if you, you can put it, take a long cup and fold it over 
onto the cup. This makes it a lot easier to pour your batter into the piping bag. I personally like to put my batter into two separate bags. So now with our piping bags, we are now going to get some scissors and cut a hole into our bag. And now we are all ready to pipe. So I like to use these Reynolds Kitchen cookie baking sheets. I like these because they're pre-cut parchment paper and you don't have to worry about it rolling all around. And it's just very simple. All you do is open it up and it's a perfect sheet of parchment paper. A tip is whenever you're piping any kind of sticky dough, such as like meringues or even macaroons, what you can do is take a little bit of your dough and place it on the corners of your baking tray. So that way the parchment paper is sticky, is staying and is holding on to the tray and not moving around while you're trying to pipe. Now I'm going to show you guys how to pipe your cream puffs or profiteroles. So what you wanna do is with the top, you're going to twist it. And when you're squeezing, you want to squeeze at the top of the piping bag and not at the bottom. Otherwise, all of this extra dough will shoot out from the top right here. When you're piping them, you wanna keep your profiteroles about an inch apart because they are going to expand a lot in the oven. And I just like to simply squeeze down, find your, until I have my desired size, and just kind of pretend you're making an O. So it should look something like this. You're gonna squeeze until you have your preferred amount and just make an O. What you don't wanna do when you're piping is squeeze down and shoot up. Because then you're gonna have that little tail on top. And what's that is, what's gonna happen is in the oven, that little tail is gonna burn. So you just squeeze and do an O. If you do happen to have those tails, which is completely fine, get a small bowl of water, dip your finger into it, and you can use that to flatten down the tops of your barrels. So like with this one, I'm just gonna kinda lightly press it down. The water is not, is going to have the parachute dough to not stick to your finger so that way you can press it down nicely. Like I said, parachute is a very universal dough. It is used to make cream puffs and eclairs and also another one of my favorites churros before we pop these in the oven i'm going to make an egg wash so just take one egg right here crack it into your bowl and you can add a splash of milk but i like to add just a splash of water here take your fork or your whisk or whatever and just mix it So our egg wash should look something like this. And then lastly, what we're gonna do, the last step right before we pop it into our oven, 
is grab a little brush and we're going to brush these, I'm just gonna call them cream puffs with our egg wash. This is gonna give it a really pretty golden brown and it's this egg wash is gonna make your cream puffs look beautiful, Instagram worthy, and you can impress all of your friends and family Our cream puffs are all ready to go into the oven, so I'm going to pop them into the 375 degree oven. And we are going to pop these in for 22 to 25 minutes. So our cream puffs are now done. The timer went off. And this is what they look like. The last tray is ready to be taken out of the oven. We have these beautiful cream puffs right here, just fresh out of the oven. I'm gonna show you guys what they should look like inside. So here we have a cream puff. When you open it, it should be completely hollow. And the reason why you want these to be nice and hollow is so they have enough space and room for them to be filled with the delicious pastry cream. Earlier, I made a video on how to make homemade pastry cream. Definitely check that video out. And I am going to show you guys how I get my piping bag ready to fill these cream puffs. So I have a tip right here. I'm gonna take my piping bag, slide the tip all the way to the bottom. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time with our piping bag. We're gonna take a tall glass and bring the ends of the piping bag over. I know it looks a little thick, but this is actually a very smooth and beautiful pastry cream. I highly recommend you guys trying to make it because it's super versatile and it can be used for anything. So now I'm going to show you guys how to fill a cream puff. Here we have a really beautiful cream puff right here. We're going to take a knife and kind of make an X. Like so. And then we're going to just take our already cut bag of pastry cream. Stick it into the cream puff and you're just gonna squeeze. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. I will be leaving the recipe in the description box below, so definitely check that out. Don't forget to check on my how to make pastry cream video. And if you've not done so yet, please subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and leave a like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.